everyone and welcome to the small group material for the Shaken series that we'll be journeying through over the next couple of weeks from our home to yours. We really hope that you're able to use this material to go deeper and to think more deeply about the things that we're talking about on a Sunday in our Shaken series. So we started out the series this last week um, talking about a passage in Hebrews 12 and how it really speaks about how we are not shaken, how worship is the thing that roots us in the unshakable kingdom of God. And we spoke about the reality that worship is a gift. But before we get there, maybe a good thing just to think about is when you say worship, kind of what pops into your mind? And I think for most people, it's probably the thing we do in song on a Sunday. Yeah, you know, it's, get, it's gathering together and singing. And even, even that in its, in its simplest form is misunderstood by so many people. You know, a lot of people think that you go to church just to sing and then sit and listen to a sermon. Um, but the meaning behind singing and declaring and proclaiming those words over each other's lives as well as your own life and taking it in for yourself. Um, and like we'll get into now, it's like realigning yourself with who God is um, and the repetition and the things that we do within singing um, are so profound and so important, um, and we did, we probably noticed that during COVID as well. Is like mm. the 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 desperate need for us as believers to gather together and sing and to declare and to um, praise God together. You can feel it in your soul. You know the need that you have for it. So singing in its essence ha can be unpacked so much in terms of what we classify as worship, but it goes so beyond that. It goes into um, every aspect of our lives. It's aligning ourselves with who God is mm. in, in the good times, the bad times, in the difficult times, in the fear, in so many things. And that in itself is, is what worship is all about. So worship and music and declaring God's praise in that way is maybe the simplest way to yes. define it, but that's just a tiny picture of what worship really is, yeah. which is declaring God's praise in everything that we yeah. do. It's giving Him honor. Um, and so we do that, we're supposed to do that in all that we are. I like the, defini the definition of worship that says, worship is all of who we are responding to all that God is. And so there's this image that when I worship, I get to look at and see and think about and contemplate who God really is and then allow myself to respond to him. That really is worship. Mm. And so worship is supposed to be the way that I go about my everyday life. Um, it's supposed to be bringing myself as a sacrificial offering to God because he is worthy yeah. and ascribing him worship in everything that yeah. I do. And I think that's, again, why we why the the need for God to give us free will is so important in our frame of reference of worship as well. Because God didn't create us to be robots, but he created us to desire to worship him, to put him first as our creator, as our, our Lord and our savior, as, you know, if we, he wants to draw us back to the garden of Eden, back to the space of walking in intimate relationship with him. Um, and we need to desire that as he desires our praises and our worship. It's the same, it's the same thing. If we, if we d desire to be back in the garden, uh, the very thing that we as human beings broke is the thing that God desires the most is to be in that intimate walking in the garden, in the shade of the garden with us. And that is actually what worship is all about, is learning to be in that deep relationship again with who God is. So the passage that we're going to encourage you to read from, from Hebrews chapter 12, you can in fact read the whole passage, but, but really from um, verse 18 to the end, speaks about um, these two different mountains, the mountain of Sinai where the Israelites received the covenant with Moses and it was the Ten Commandments and all the other commandments that went along with that. And there was the presence of God, but it was all fire and smoke and fear. <laughs> and then it compares it to the mountain of Zion, which says we are not called to that mountain, but we have a mediator of a new covenant. We have Jesus who invites us and grants us access so that at this new mountain, we can find grace and acceptance and we can worship. And I just love how it ends. It says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. 
Mm. Um, and that really is the heart of the series and, and what it's all about. And and this last week we spoke about how these different pictures in Hebrews gives us a picture of worship as a gift. And I think we so take for granted, especially if you've grown up in church yeah. and worship's just kind of been part of your life and you know that there's, you know, the... the it's either that or completely weird. Yes. <laughs> but, but I mean, I think for most of us, we've kind of got, if we yeah. think of worship, what pops into my head is like all the beautiful Hillsong hymns and uh, Hill, Hillsong songs and the, the hymns that maybe you grew up with and the, the you know, the different, you know, worship bands and, and music that is out there. But that's normally what comes to mind. But it's something that we just so take for granted as part of life. But, but do we remember and do we accept and do we acknowledge the incredible gift that worship is? That worship is an opportunity for us to gain access into the very presence yeah, of God. Yeah, access, alignment, and um, elevation, um, putting us on in in a different way of thinking. You know, um, not in a trance, but in a in a elevating ourselves. Be, sometimes a little bit beyond our current circumstances, beyond the problems that we're facing. Um, and it, it always reminds me, you get those people who are, find themselves in the most difficult of spaces, but yet there's peace and there's wisdom emanating from them to deal with the situation. And there's just the steadfastness um, that, that, that they have. And it's, it's, it's this, it's, it's the, they've, they've aligned themselves with God. They've drawn near to the access that they have to receive that power mm -hmm. from God. And therefore, they are elevated to think beyond just the current circumstances. Um, I'm often reminded of Stephen in, in Scripture, who's being stoned to death, yet he he's elevated beyond that. He's elevated beyond his own physical pain um, because into the unshakable, into kingdom. The unshakable kingdom. You know, mm. um, there's so many stories like that, and we'll unpack a few of them in the weeks to come. But that's what it's about. It's about no matter what the earthly kingdom and perspective looks like it's elevating ourselves beyond that because we understand we have access to power that goes beyond this world um, and we choose to align ourselves with that you know mm. and worship really is about taking the focus off me and putting it yeah. back on god and that's like a, you have to keep doing it over and over and that's why worship is so powerful because it shifts my focus it shifts my heart it shifts my priorities and in doing that things are really changed and i can stand on that unshakable foundation so it really is our heart and our prayer that throughout the series you will experience maybe for the first time or maybe again just a deep awareness of God's invitation to you mm. um, to be solid, to stand on the solid ground that is truly unshakable in the love and the grace of Christ. And mm -hmm. I just want to read this, um, close with this little passage again from Hebrews 12 and verse 27 where he says, the words once more indicating the removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken will remain. Yeah. And that's really the gift that worship gives us, is that it, it removes the things that don't matter, it removes the temporary, it removes the earthly things, and it, it helps us to focus and to hold on to those things that can never be shaken. So I think spend some time, maybe now, in your groups or by yourself, or however you're choosing to do this home group material, um, just take a moment and go, where is it that... Maybe I need to uh, align myself with God right now. What is it that I'm dealing with at the moment where maybe I've looked at earthly situations and gone, this is where I can get my solution or this is where my power comes from or this is where my, um, my heart is at. And, and maybe stop, like we said on Sunday, stop so that you can look up, um, realign yourself and see from a different perspective uh, at the situation and maybe you're dealing with some stuff at the moment and maybe this helps is just stop worship uh, and uh, realign your worship and your thinking and your heart with God so that you can um, step into that situation uh, with a different a mindset with a different perspective um, and deal with it differently uh, through peace and through bravery and through wisdom so maybe take some time just to think where is it that you need to realign yourself at the moment with the heart of God.